Hi folks! In this video, I'm going to review the TTS20 Pro, which is an affordable plug-and-play 20-watt diode desktop laser engraver from Two Trees that has a large work area of 418 mm square and can engrave at speeds of up to 30,000 mm per minute. The engraver is shipped almost fully assembled in a cardboard box packed with foam. Inside we have the instruction manual, the power adapter, safety goggles, an air pump for the air assist feature, tubing and a USB cable, a focus block and fixtures, the laser module, zip ties, the engraver frame and controller, and a honeycomb work platform. To finish the assembly, I began by fastening the controller, wiring harness clips, and the X-axis limit switch to the frame with the provided screws. Next, I installed the laser module. It's a very compact design compared to most 20 watt modules, which combines and compresses the beam from four or five watt laser diodes into a spot as small as eight hundredths of a millimeter square, and also uses chip on submount technology for better efficiency. Of course, it also has a protective laser shield so you can see the laser working safely, as well as air assist for better cutting and engraving performance. The module attaches to the frame through a dovetail slide that allows for easy focus adjustments and is secured with a thumb screw. After attaching the module, all that was left to do was connect the wiring harness, check the frame for square, then adjust the belt tension and connect the air pump. The pump is also very compact and comes with a dial switch for adjusting the airflow as well as rubber feet to minimize vibration. After the engraver was assembled, I plugged in the power adapter, connected the machine to my shop PC with the USB cable, and turned it on to begin setting it up in the Lightburn software. Setting up the engraver is really simple. All you have to do is make sure it's connected to a USB port, then open Lightburn and click the Devices tab in the panel on the right. Another window will open showing your device list. Click the Find My Laser button and Lightburn will attempt to communicate with the engraver. As long as it's connected, then it should eventually appear in the Device Wizard where you'll need to select it, and then click the Add Device button. Two Trees also sent me this material kit, which includes a package of wooden tags, some pine blocks, metal tags, a stamper, metal business cards, a picture frame, some green and black acrylic sheets, a rubber sheet with adhesive on the back, glitter paper, scratch paper, some cardboard sheets, and a piece of basswood plywood. My first test is going to be cutting a piece of 3.2mm birch plywood using Lightburn's material test tool, which is a great tool for testing different speed, power, and interval settings on different materials and figuring out the best combination for a certain engraving or cutting task before starting it. After setting the parameters for cutting, I click the preview button to double check that everything looks good, then click the frame button to move the module around the work area that I'll be working so that I could position the plywood, set the focus, and start engraving. The focus is set using the multi-level focus block that has different focus settings depending on the thickness of the material that you're working.
As you can see, the laser did really well, producing clean straight cuts with a fine kerf. Next, I used the same material test tool to test how well it engraves at different speeds. Again, the laser is proving itself to be a very capable machine with an engraving speed up to 30,000 millimeters per minute. So far, their claims are checking out and I really like what I see. To really test the power of this machine, I tried cutting through a piece of 10mm thick birch plywood and a 17mm thick pine board in one pass. The settings that I used for both were 100mm per minute for speed and 100% power. The result is really impressive. This has to be one of the strongest 20 watt lasers that I've used so far. But power isn't all that matters. I want to see how well it engraves a high resolution 3D image in this piece of basswood. I use these plastic rivets that came with the engraver to hold the wood in place and make sure that I get the best result. The settings that I used and the processing time for this and all other jobs from this point forward will be written on the workpiece and shared at the end of the video. Now I want to try something more delicate, like this piece of scratch paper that I taped to a ceramic tile to help hold it flat. I think my power setting was a bit too high, but it still captured a lot of detail regardless. Next, I tried engraving and cutting this piece of black acrylic.
Again, the laser did a great job. No issues whatsoever. So then I tried engraving my logo into a piece of rubber to make a rubber stamp. This machine can also engrave certain metals like this coated aluminum sheet. This is one of my go-to images for testing engravers, and this machine has probably done the best job engraving it yet. This turned out really nice. Of course, I can't end the video without testing how well the laser etches stainless steel. Like other machines, varying the speed, power, and interval settings will vary the heat input to the steel and as a result will produce loads of different colors, as you can see. The range of settings can be different between engravers, but once I found the colors that I was looking for using Lightburn's test tool, I then etched the two tree logo into another piece of stainless steel. I tried to match the blue in the logo with the blue on the engraver, but I think it might be a bit too dark. It's hard to tell since I'm colorblind, but I think it still looks great. The consistency in the color is what I'm looking for, and this machine nailed it. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And if you want to see more like it on the day they're uploaded, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. If you'd like to get a TTS20 Pro for yourself, then check out the links in the video description and pinned comment below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Until next time, take care folks.